Jen Walters, the sensational The Savage She-Hulk. The Incredible Hulk needs no introduction. One of the world's most recognizable superheroes, the Jade Giant is synonymous with rage itself. As one of the strongest and most complex characters in the Marvel Universe, the Hulk's history is long and complicated as our regular viewers already know. But despite being a loner, the Hulk has built an extended family of outcast and gamma-powered mutates, the most notable being his cousin, the sensational She-Hulk. Though she shares a name and skin tone with old Jade Jaws, She-Hulk could not be more different from her namesake. Where Bruce Banner is a haunted man always on the run, cursed and burdened by his uncontrollable powerful transformation, his cousin Jennifer Walters fully embraces hers. A fun-loving, tough-as-nails, confident, and empowered female character, She-Hulk is one of Marvel's foremost heroines. With time on the roster of the Avengers, the Fantastic Four, and the Defenders, she is as beloved by Marvel's characters as she is by readers. This video will give an overview of Jen's history and abilities and just what makes her so enduring outside of her association with her more famous cousin. If Hulk is all about rage, She-Hulk is all about confidence which has taken many forms for Jen over the years. Chief among them is usually the lighthearted tone of her book which rarely takes itself seriously. Sometimes she even knows she's in a comic. While the level of silliness in her comics might change over the years, She-Hulk's character continues to be a vehicle for poking playful fun at comics and embarking on lighthearted adventures. She-Hulk rarely gets too stressed out about being big and green and instead uses her abilities to project confidence, get dates, and use her notoriety to promote her career as a lawyer. She-Hulk's journey is one of empowerment. Before she gained her ability, she was a bookish and shy attorney. Over time, she became accustomed to her new looks and the advantages her super strength bought her. She-Hulk became the embodiment of everything Jen wished she could be. So, how did this mild-mannered attorney become the sensational She-Hulk? Let's find out. Becoming She-Hulk. I'll learn to live with it. From now on, whatever Jennifer Walters can't handle, the She-Hulk will do. Jen Walters was introduced as a criminal lawyer devoted to justice. In her youth, she was a shy and introverted woman who spent her time in law school hitting the books while her classmates partied. She was so heavily devoted to her studies that when her classmates heard her name called at graduation, many did not even recognize her. As they celebrated together, Jen Walters stood off to the side alone. Years later, she was a successful lawyer. While she was still timid in her personal life, her sense of justice drove her to excel in her career. In the first issue of her debut series, The Savage She-Hulk, she was defending a gangster who had been double-crossed by Nicholas Trask, the head of the criminal empire in Los Angeles. Knowing this case would reveal evidence against him, Trask had hired men to silence Jen Walters. While Trask's cronies hid in their car surrounding her house, Jen's cousin Dr. Bruce Banner arrived at her office door. On the run again and not knowing who else to turn to, he came to Jen, who, in their childhood, was one of his closest friends, although they had lost touch in adulthood. Bruce divulged his secret to Jen, but immediately regretted it, fearing that by showing up and letting her in on his secret, he had put her in danger. Nonetheless, Jen drove Bruce to her home to continue catching up and to determine how her legal knowledge might help him. Little did they know they were being watched. As soon as the two stepped out of the car, Jen was shot by Trask's thugs in a drive-by shooting. Bruce ran to his cousin's side and raced her to a nearby doctor's office where he performed an emergency blood transfusion to stabilize her. This worked to keep her going long enough for Bruce to fortunately escort her to the hospital. When Jen awoke, she discovered that Bruce had left, anxious that the police asking questions would find out that he was the Hulk. Of course, the escape was not exactly subtle. He hulked out and burst through the wall. As Jen recovered in her hospital bed, Trask's men arrived to finish the job. As they tried to suffocate her, the fear and anxiety triggered a transformation in Jen and she doubled in size and turned green. As a result of the emergency transfusion Bruce had given her, Jen's blood was infused with a gamma radiation that flowed through her body. Now she too could transform into a green behemoth. Horrified, the assassin screamed in fear that she had turned into some kind of She-Hulk. She subdued the thugs by ripping apart her hospital room and chasing them down an elevator, tearing it open and pummeling them until the police came. Feeling her strength dissipate, She-Hulk ran back to the hospital and reverted to Jen Walters after the danger passed. Both horrified and empowered by the enormous strength and transformation, Jen vowed that from now on She-Hulk would handle whatever Jen Walters could not. But Trask was not done with her yet and tried again to kill Jen. Unfortunately, their plot to sabotage Jen's car resulted in the death of her best friend Jill instead. 
Trask's goons cut the brakes in Jen's car, so when Jill borrowed it, she was unable to stop. She-Hulk tried to save Jill once she realized what had happened, but failed. After speeding across the highway, Jill ended up dying in the car chase. Jen did not even have time to mourn her friend before the police came. She-Hulk was blamed for the death of her friend and was on the run. She eventually tracked down Trask, and during one of their battles, the crime boss ended up killed by his own plot, buried deep beneath the earth in a giant robot. With that, She-Hulk's name was cleared, and her career as a superhero had officially begun. Though in the early days, Jen's transformation was usually triggered by heightened emotions and was largely uncontrollable. She gradually learned to embrace her powers and control the change at will. Jen found that being She-Hulk made her more confident and empowered her to believe she could handle anything physically and emotionally. As such, she rarely chose to revert back to her original form and chose to live life as She-Hulk exclusively. She-Hulk's new lease on her life as a fun and loving, confident woman was apparent in her brief team-up with The Thing from the Fantastic Four. While The Thing was working as a bodyguard in LA, She-Hulk picked him up from the side of the road where he was hitchhiking. She drove him to his destination at a power plant to confront a supervillain. Along the way, She-Hulk kept The Thing on his toes, speeding down the highway, clearing out a bar, and giving him a big kiss while they dined together. Where up until that point in her solo adventures, She-Hulk had been sometimes a brooding hero who couldn't balance her life as a lawyer and her new superpowers. She had now fully embraced being She-Hulk and all the confidence it gave her. When she was invited to join the Avengers, she gladly accepted and quit her day job as a lawyer in favor of superheroing full time. If you're enjoying this kind of introduction to lesser known heroes, subscribe to Plot Armor Comics for more powers and abilities. As you can see, when Jen Walters transforms into the She-Hulk, her her body expands, becoming more muscular and significantly taller while her skin and hair turn green. While the She-Hulk is not as physically powerful as the Hulk, she is incredibly strong. Part of what limits her strength compared to the Hulk's is that Jen Walters' transformation is, on most occasions, purely physical as opposed to mental. Hulk's strength is defined by his rage and grows as he gets angrier, but She-Hulk does not usually have the same personality or rage issues. Bruce Banner is a character defined by his disassociative identity disorder, whereas Jen Walters does not have the same kinds of psychological trauma. Her physical power can increase as her rage increases, but since she is usually fairly well adjusted, she rarely loses control. One exception was her recent transformation in the pages of Avengers, where an overdose of gamma radiation by the Celestial Essen enhanced her powers and turned her into Savage She-Hulk. Her physical power makes her one of the strongest heroes on Earth. She-Hulk's super strength allows her to leap incredible distances and survive just about anything with minimal injury, as well as increases her speed significantly. Her transformation also increases her ability to heal when she does get injured. For a brief time, she was like all gamma-powered characters, immortal thanks to the complex machinations of the one below all. However, after Bruce Banner's defeat of this demonic entity, it is assumed that this is no longer the case. Jen Walters is an extremely intelligent and accomplished lawyer. Unfortunately, her penchant for destroying her place of work during her Avengers duties means she has a hard time holding down a steady job, despite her talents as an attorney. Her experience as a superhero and training under Gamora from the Guardians of the Galaxy has also given her significant combat practice. All of these skills make one thing clear. Don't mess with the She-Hulk. In the past, She-Hulk was aware that she was a comic book character and would interact with the pages of the book by tearing through the page and the comic's ads to get to the supervillain's base, berating creators, and speaking to the readers. This fourth wall breaking power comes and goes depending on how much the creators lean into the character's lighthearted sensibilities, but even when it's less obvious, her books often include some parody and make playful jokes about comics in general. She-Hulk's solo series from the 80s remains a groundbreaking comic in the way it highlighted the construction of the comic page itself and the lead character making fun of her creators, something that was completely new at the time but present-day readers might now associate more closely with that of Deadpool, who stole her whole shtick. Team Player She-Hulk joined the Avengers just in time for Marvel's big toy commercial. I mean, classic crossover event, Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars. This event saw heroes and villains across the Marvel Universe transported to a place called Battleworld and pit against one another for the entertainment of the comic being known as the Beyonder. Secret Wars brought together many of the most iconic heroes and villains and even introduced some new ones, including the super powerhouse known as Titania, who would go on to become one of She-Hulk's most enduring enemies. 
Tatani was a young woman who constantly felt unappreciated and unpopular. She eventually became incredibly jealous of She-Hulk's beauty and celebrity status, which led to the two clashing many times over the years. Tatani is often treated more like a joke, someone She-Hulk is bothered by frequently but deals with in one hit. Some writers over the years, however, have helped flesh her out and make her a bit more of a tragic character with real motivations. But since She-Hulk's books are usually humor-oriented, that doesn't always stick. After the Secret Wars combatants returned to Earth, many of the heroes and teams saw big changes as a ploy to tantalize readers into buying the new event series. These post-Secret Wars issues came out at the same time as the first issue of the crossover and the big changes including Spider-Man's new black suit that would later become Venom and She-Hulk. Hulk joining the Fantastic Four to replace Ben Grimm, the ever-loving blue-eyed thing. Ben had stayed behind because Battleworld somehow allowed him to transform back and forth to his original human form. Jen had various adventures with the Fantastic Four, ranging from fighting the deadly time-traveling Terminus, combating robots in the Wild West, the subatomic Psycho Man, and flirting with longtime FF alley Wyatt Wingfoot, who would go on to become a frequent on-again, off-again romance. She-Hulk became like an extended family member during her time on the Fantastic Four, growing in confidence and self-assurance and discovering her identity as a superhero while in their encouraging environment. During her time with the team, she was dosed with high levels of gamma radiation while trying to prevent a radiation leak on a shield helicarrier. Mr. Fantastic told her this additional radiation meant she would be trapped in her She-Hulk form forever. She would later find out that this wasn't true, but in fact, she couldn't transform into Jen Walters anymore because she subconsciously decided she didn't want to. When the Thing returned, She-Hulk went back to the Avengers and stayed a member of the team on and off for many years to come but she would remain close with the Fantastic Four, even helping form a replacement team many years later when they disappeared. She even teamed up with Ant-Man and a couple of other bizarre replacements, but we'll get to that a little bit later. At this point, Jen had changed a lot from her earliest adventures, where She-Hulk was basically just a less powerful version of her cousin. By the time she had left the Fantastic Four, she was fully comfortable in her green skin and completely embraced her life as She-Hulk. That strong sense of self would go on to become a defining feature for the character. She never shied away from taking control of her identity and her decisions, including romance and career. While coming and going from the Avengers team, She-Hulk had plenty of adventures of her own. Borrowing an apartment from her teammate the Wasp, She-Hulk moved to New York where she was targeted by a group of villains called the Headmen. This weird group of creepy scientists removed people's heads to increase their own strength and hoped to use She-Hulk's body as a new host for the psychic team member Shondu, who was at the time stuck to the body of some weird chimera creature. Since it was the third issue of her new series, she decided it was time for a team-up, and that was when Spider-Man stumbled into the whole ordeal. She-Hulk's body fought the wall crawler while her head tried to figure out how long she had been knocked out. During the fight, Spidey punched the new head from She-Hulk's body but realized they had not actually decapitated She-Hulk at all, but rather had made a clone of her body. She-Hulk managed to break free after some effort, but she instructed the writer to skip to the good stuff, and the book jumped ahead to the two heroes capturing the villains. As the headman escaped in a massive armored tank, Spidey dropped She-Hulk in front of the tank, and as it drove straight into her, she tore the vehicle clear in two. With the headman dealt with, She-Hulk was recruited to be Assistant District Attorney of New York. With her new career, she began prioritizing work over everything else, including relationships and superheroing. Her adventures reunited her with her old flame Wyatt Wingfoot and saw her tussle with classic villain the Eraser, who transported her to his dimension to be their queen where they held Wyatt as ransom. She-Hulk managed to travel back to her world, tearing through the blank page in another fourth wall breaking gag, poking fun at the artist for being too lazy to draw something cool. She-Hulk's solo adventures continued for some time, teaming up with the world's greatest detective, Santa Claus, Howard the Duck, and even kidnapped her comics writer. Jen would eventually make her way back to the Avengers after the team reconfigured itself, managing to find some balance between lawyering and avenging. She would come when asked, but was reluctant to commit to full-time duties. Her time with this version of the Avengers was one of her longest tenures with the Earth's Mightiest Heroes, even if her participation was sporadic and helped solidify her place in the larger community of superheroes. But it would soon end in tragedy. Before things went south, she brought her lighthearted confidence to the crew, treating the adventures like she was a swashbuckling and flirtatious hero who loved what she did. 
With her great strength, being an Avenger might as well have been a team sport. The happy-go-lucky heroes began to unravel on a mission investigating a mysterious and deadly red cloud. She-Hulk's gamma radiation was inadvertently siphoned off by her teammate Jack of Hearts, and She-Hulk reverted to her regular form for the first time in years. Deep in the underground labs that created the strange cloud, the Avengers had to wear protective suits to keep themselves safe. Unfortunately, She-Hulk's suit was damaged by gunfire, so when she changed back to Jen Walter, she was completely vulnerable. Unprotected from the deadly cloud of gas, Jen was dying. Her skin began to deteriorate and shrivel up and grew red splotches as her body convulsed in pain. Jack of Hearts desperately tried to resuscitate her, but Jen was rapidly slipping away until her body reacted and she transformed into the She-Hulk. But the stress of the near-death experience caused her to change into her savage form, an uncontrollable Hulk fueled by emotion. She-Hulk rampaged through the underground lab, fighting off the rest of the Avengers as they tried to subdue her. When the Vision attacked her, she pummeled his robotic body and punched straight through his chest, liquefying his insides with the force of her attack. Not exactly the fun-loving character we have come to know. She-Hulk escaped and went looking for Bruce Banner. She eventually reverted back to Jen Walters and tracked him down to Bone, Idaho. As she traveled, she lamented no longer being She-Hulk. I hate not being her, she thought to herself. I hate not being She-Hulk. When the Avengers tracked her down and the Scarlet Witch confronted her, Jen tried to run away. She was terrified that she would hurt her friends, and it was fear that triggered her transformation. She struggled to fight the fear of hurting her friends, but transformed into She-Hulk and attacked Scarlet Witch. She-Hulk rampaged through the town, destroying everything in her path and fighting her teammates in the process. As she raged, she wanted to make everyone else feel as afraid as she did. Eventually, Bruce emerged from his hiding and arrived on the outskirts of town to try to help subdue his cousin. He attempted to talk the savage She-Hulk down by pointing out all the destruction she had caused. The town of Bone was completely destroyed. Bruce asked if she had understood what she had done. She-Hulk told Banner that Jen Walters was afraid that by turning into She-Hulk, Bruce had made her fear go away, that she loved him. She asked if Bruce remembered her. He explained that of course he remembered her and how she helped him deal with his fear of his abusive parents. He wanted to know what made She-Hulk afraid. She said failure or not measuring up to the perfection expected of her. Just as Banner had begun calming her down, the military arrived and forced to subdue her, which led her to run away. And then when Hawkeye tried to shoot an arrow to distract her, Banner stepped out in front of the shot, which triggered his transformation into the Hulk. If she Hulk wouldn't listen to Banner, Hulk would make her listen to him. The two fought an explosive battle in the mountains outside of town. Clobbering one another with massive green fists, they ripped trees from the ground and used them as massive battering weapons and crashed boulders into one another. The fight raged on until Jack of Hearts arrived on the scene and absorbed all of the radiation powering the Hulks. He restored Jen to the proper amount to sustain her normal powers and abilities. Single Green Female Traumatized by the event, Jen began leaning into her celebrity as She-Hulk and embracing the person she truly wanted to be, the confident, flirtatious, fun-loving She-Hulk. Though the comics do not come out and say it, it's obvious that She-Hulk was scared that she would lose control again. She wanted to live it up and celebrate and have the kind of social life she had been too timid to pursue as Jen Walters, which she might someday lose if she went savage again. Unfortunately, her string of boyfriends, including one of the world's most famous underwear models, and post-victory parties were causing major headaches for the rest of the Avengers. With a new guy invited over just about every night and plenty of party guests, she was putting a strain on the Avengers' background checking capacity. She was also leaving the mansion wrecked nearly every night, which left poor Jarvis the butler to clean up her messes. As a result of all of this, She-Hulk was asked to move out of the mansion. Worse, at the same time, she was let go from her job in the DA's office because her Avengers activities were a liability to their cases. With all these stressors, She-Hulk was finding that she was inadvertently transforming into Jen Walters while she slept, which was embarrassing for her when in bed with a new man who went on a date with She-Hulk but woke up with someone half her size. She-Hulk was facing a crisis point. While she was at a bar trying to drown her sorrow, she was approached by Holden Holloway, senior partner at a law firm specializing in the new field of superhuman law. He had one condition in hiring her, however. He wanted Jennifer Walters, not She-Hulk. She-Hulk reluctantly accepted and reverted to Jen Walters to seal the deal. Unfortunately, where the alcohol had not impacted her She-Hulk form, it all caught up with regular Jen Walters who immediately threw up on her new boss and passed out. Jen was regretting her decisions. She hated being regular old Jen Walters and believed that it was She-Hulk that made her special and worthwhile. 
She also worried that being Jen would leave her vulnerable to any attacks, and so to prevent people from hurting her in human form, Scarlet Witch cast a spell that rendered anyone intending to harm She-Hulk incapable of recognizing her as Jennifer Walters. That last part is important later. Jen eventually realized that she did not need to be She-Hulk all the time and that her mind was a powerful tool on its own. She-Hulk might make her physically stronger, but she was finally learning to feel confident in her human form. One of her most high-profile cases was helping Spider-Man sue J. Jonah Jameson and the Daily Bugle for years of defamation. This was thrilling to Spider-Man, both because Peter Parker was really broke and needed the money, but also more importantly, it meant embarrassing J. Jonah Jameson publicly. Unfortunately, just as it looked like Spidey was about to win his settlement, the law firm expanded the lawsuit to include Peter Parker for his part in the defamation suit. When he found this out, Spidey crawled up to the She-Hulk's window for an announcement in the form of a knock-knock joke. Knock-knock. Who's there? Ivana. Ivana who? Ivana Settle. Spidey would drop the suit if Jameson spent a full day publicly apologizing while wearing an inflatable chicken suit. Jen's law career soon went intergalactic when She-Hulk was invited to join the Magistrati, the representatives for the Cosmic Guardian of Justice for All Creation, the Living Tribunal. As a member of this elite group of law keepers, She-Hulk was to act as a voice and vessel for the Tribunal's justice across space and time. Her first couple of cases for the court were touch and go. The first was a custody dispute between two aliens over who would keep their one child. When she jokingly recounted the tale of King Solomon and his suggestion of splitting the baby in half to spur the parents into compromise, the aliens immediately loved the idea. But before She-Hulk could protest, the aliens sliced their child in two. She-Hulk was horrified, but her robotic bailiff applauded her wisdom and revealed that this race could multiply when cut in half. She had actually provided a solution that resulted in both parents getting to keep the child. That was certainly pushing the boundaries of beginner's luck. Her biggest challenge as a member of the Magistrati was on the planet Skardon, which was ruled by the Galactic Immortal Champion. Skardon was a planet where the rule of law and politics were decided in the boxing ring. The rules of engagement were simple. No outside weapons and whoever is knocked out first loses. With the power of one of the Infinity Stones embedded in his hand, Champion was unstoppable and had beaten down powerful opponents including the Silver Surfer, Beta Ray Bill, and Adam Warlock. She-Hulk's first match ended disastrously with the hero quickly beaten to a bloody pulp. As she was dragged from the ring, she filed an appeal which meant a rematch in three months. Jen trained intensively between bouts, learning fighting techniques from Gamora. During the training, she realized that her strength as She-Hulk was exponentially stronger than her Jen Walters form, so if she trained and increased her strength in her human form, She-Hulk would be even more powerful. By the time she was ready to face Champion again, she was more powerful than she had ever been. It might have been the intensive training, or it could have been the killer jock jam she had her robot partner pump up for her training montage. She-Hulk also realized that Champion had been cheating by using the power gem and made a wager with the Immortal that if she won, Champion must promise never to wear the power gem again. Champion agreed, but required She-Hulk to become his wife should she lose. Confident in her new strength, She-Hulk agreed. When the fight started, She-Hulk won easily, pounding the snot out of Champion as the crowd cheered on. With her victory, she became the new ruler of Scarred. Justice served, She-Hulk returned home and left the planet in the hands of Adam Warlock, Gamora, and other heroes who had tried to rescue them from Champion's tyrannical rule. Alas, the good times would not last, and just as she had seemed to be on the edge of personal breakthroughs, the Scarlet Witch went and caused chaos for everyone. For the second time in a short period, Jen lost control of her powers and reverted to the savage She-Hulk. The Scarlet Witch had lost all control and seemingly gone insane. She used her magic to manipulate She-Hulk and set her loose as a savage monster. As mayhem ensued at the Avengers Mansion, She-Hulk nearly killed Captain America and tore the Vision in half with her bare hands. Scarlet Witch's actions and her turn to villainy were recounted in the comics Avengers Disassembled and House of M. If you want to find out more about those stories and what made this hero go bad, check out the Scarlet Witch videos on this channel and subscribe while you're at it. Although the latest latest rampage was directly a result of the Scarlet Witch's magic and not her fault, Jen was completely traumatized by what she did and that it happened so soon after the events in Bone, Idaho. Unable to face her friends and teammates, She-Hulk officially quit the Avengers to focus on her career. Jen Walters, Super Lawyer Things weren't going so well on the career front either. She-Hulk's law firm was completely destroyed when her old enemy Titania, 
who hated She-Hulk for embarrassing her and was jealous of her celebrity status, was granted the Power Gym by Champion as a ploy for revenge. Newly empowered and basically unstoppable, Titania attacked the firm to find She-Hulk and finally defeat her. Their fight destroyed the entire building and Jen had to use her brilliant mind to win the day. She had a shape-shifting colleague pose as a dead She-Hulk to trick Titania into believing she had finally killed her nemesis. Taking advantage of the Scarlet Witch's spell that no one who wished harm on Jen Walters could notice her, she snuck up on Titania and took the Power Gem back. She gave Titania a good solid punch and ended the threat in a single blow. But now Jen Walters was temporarily out of a job until things could be rebuilt. Hard to believe she had a hard time keeping a job. With her retirement from the Avengers and the emotional scars from her savage rampages, Jen now found herself unable to transform back and forth into her green form at will. As such, she had no choice but to live life as plain old Jen Walters. Fortunately, her work at the superhero law firm was empowering enough to make her feel confident in her normal form for the first time, which meant she didn't miss it too much. She also now had real fighting skills courtesy of the deadliest woman in the galaxy, so she was not completely defenseless. Dr. Leonard Sampson and Jen's psychologist and fellow Gamma-powered superhero also created a Gamma Charger device that let her transform into She-Hulk for short bursts when it had collected enough Gamma power. During a case involving time travel, Jen discovered that her dead teammate Hawkeye, killed by Scarlet Witch during Avengers Disassembled, had been recruited for the jury from the past. After trying to warn him and keep him from dying, Jen was arrested under trial. The Time Variance Authority, or TVA, which you might have seen from the Disney Plus Loki show, arrested Jen and charged her with high crimes against the time stream. Her punishment was being wiped from existence. Jen and her counsel argued that as an Avenger and superhero, she was too important to the time stream to be deleted. The TVA in response brought She-Hulk to the future to see the fallout of what they called the Reckoning War, whose events would domino from the action she had taken. Horrified by the potential ramifications, Jen initially accepted her a punishment of being deleted but after being told that the world wouldn't end and that despite the hard times she'd still inspire people to be better, she changed her mind. After helping save the TVA from an attack by a supervillain, she was instead sentenced to look after another TVA prisoner. Jen continued working as a lawyer with occasional superheroic adventures. With the help of Doctor Strange, she was eventually able to control her transformation when they discovered that it was Scarlet Witch's magic that had actually been causing her transformation problems and that they were not purely a matter of mental blocks as she previously had thought. The spell made the identity of Jennifer Walters somewhere She-Hulk could retreat to, a place where she wouldn't be accountable for She-Hulk's actions. With the mystic medicine, She-Hulk was back in the game. However, the time spent not being able to fully rely on the She-Hulk as a crutch and source of confidence had given Jen a new sense of self and confidence in who she was under the green skin and made her an even more formidable hero. Unfortunately, a colleague of hers who had been injured in Titania's attack orchestrated a complex plot to have She-Hulk disbarred. The plot was successful when video footage of She-Hulk attacking her client went public. Although it was the result of illusions and trickery, it hurt her reputation and She-Hulk was no longer a lawyer for now. She-Hulk went on to have even more crazy adventures, including once again finding herself in front of the Living Tribunal in order to defend her universe from being replaced by the Ultimate Universe, working as a bounty hunter alongside the daughter of the villainous Super Scroll, and fighting with and ultimately befriending the She-Hulk from an alternate world. This new She-Hulk named Lyra was the daughter of her world's version of Bruce Banner. When she was captured by the new evil group known as the Intelligentsia, a super team made up of some of the Marvel Universe's most brilliant mad scientists and enemies of the Hulk, Lyra eventually rescued her. The two teamed up with the help of Red She-Hulk to help defeat the Intelligentsia and their plans, which was to create an army of Red Hulks to use as soldiers to take over the world. Lyra and Jen then teamed up to do more cool superhero things in New York like battling super apes. The Forever Fantastic Avenger When the Fantastic Four planned to go on a family adventure through time and space, they recruited a team of four potential replacements just in case things went wrong. This being comic books, of course things went wrong. The Thing had asked She-Hulk to step in for him while training together in the gym, where she punched the bag so hard Thing went crashing into the wall. Though they were only supposed to be gone for about four minutes on Wednesday afternoon, they wanted to have a backup plan should their time warp shenanigans not work out. While The Thing recruited She-Hulk, Invisible Woman called on Medusa, Queen of the Inhumans, and Mr. Fantastic asked Ant-Man to step up. 
Meanwhile, the Human Torch forgot to ask anyone, and his most recent girlfriend, the pop star Darla Deering, ended up joining the team in a robotic thing suit. When a time-displaced Human Torch returned from a future where the rest of his family had died, She-Hulk reached out to her old flame Wyatt Wingfoot to test this old man Johnny. The older Torch passed all their tests, and the FF began formulating a plan to prevent Doctor Doom from killing the team. Before the Fantastic Four could enact any plan against Doctor Doom, She-Hulk had an evening out with Wyatt Wingfoot now that they had reconnected. However, the four Moloids, underground mutant children who were part of the FF's education program, all had a crush on the one they called the Gen, and who could blame them? So they tried to sabotage her night. However, everything they did only made what was supposed to be a platonic dinner between two friends into a romantic evening. This included trying to hypnotize their waiter into doing something crazy which resulted in a free meal and heating up the bar which only made for one sweaty dance. Come the close of the evening, She-Hulk admitted to Wyatt that he was the one that got away and that all of her other romances had always been measured against him. They ended the evening with a kiss, unsure of what their future held. Wyatt and Jen briefly dated, but when the original Fantastic Four returned, She-Hulk threw herself back into her work, leaving little time for romance. While her time on this strange version of the Fantastic Four didn't last long, it highlighted how well she works in a team and can instantly make even a group of strangers comfortable together. With her life back in order, Jen managed to get her law license back and set up her own practice. During this time, Luke Cage reached out for help with his new new team of Avengers. He asked Jen to provide them with legal consultation, but of course she was inevitably brought into the action on the field and helped Cage's Avengers out of a few jams. Around this time, She-Hulk had also put together an all-woman superhero team called A-Force. Together, this powerhouse super team, including the Inhuman Queen Medusa, Captain Marvel, Nico Manuro, and the Dazzler, fought the sentient pocket universe called the Singularity, and the multiverse displaced villain, the Countess. A-Force later helped to intercept an attack by the mad titan Thanos, but although they were able to stop him, Thanos killed War Machine in the battle and critically injured She-Hulk. When she awoke, she discovered that Hawkeye, who was still alive, had killed her cousin Bruce. Recovering physically and mentally, Jen spent more time at her job as a lawyer. World of Grey. As it did before, all of this trauma left Jen unable to properly control her powers. When stressed, she found herself becoming a new Grey She-Hulk that had even greater muscle mass and physical strength, but suffered from decreased intelligence. Hmm, sound familiar? This new rage-powered form was more like her cousin, the Incredible Hulk. Hmm, a big monster with rage issues. Not not exactly original. Despite this, Jen tried to start fresh with a new law firm. Her first client was a woman named Maisie Brune who was also recovering from some trauma. Maisie was being evicted and Jen agreed to help. Although Jen did her best, Maisie became impatient and summoned a fear golem that she used to kill her landlord. The golem also killed a few cops and tried to kill Jen, but she changed into her new gray form and defeated the monster. She-Hulk managed to convince Maisie not to commit suicide, but had her arrested for reckless endangerment. To help with her mental health struggles, Jen went to see Florida Mayer, a best-selling self-help book author who had been reaching out to Jen for some time. During the session, Flo gave Jen a special pill to help her find herself. Between you and me, this pill doesn't sound like it was medically approved. Suddenly, Jen began to hallucinate, envisioning herself as a floating head. After confronting her Hulk persona and Thanos in her subconscious, she regained her body and encountered Bruce who represented all her fear, rage, and insecurities. When she woke up, Jen discovered that she had torn Flo's room apart and was back to her usual green self. That didn't last long, though. When the Celestial S and the Searcher invaded Earth, Jen was physically drawn to it. The alien being zapped her with an additional dose of gamma radiation and supercharged her powers. Once again, she was more powerful but less intelligent. Dropping she from her name, Hulk joined the Avengers and had a brief romance with Thor, both attracted to the other's immense power. Jen worried that Thor had no interest in Jennifer Walters and only desired the Hulk, but she realized that wasn't true after a heart-to-heart -heart talk and a dramatic kiss. Hulk lost the amped-up gamma powers eventually when she absorbed the radiation from a Russian-deployed gamma bomb. After absorbing all of its power, Hulk retreated to the Avengers Mountain, their new home base, and the dead remains of one of the Celestials, and released all of the gamma energy far away from any potential victims. With the gamma ejected from her system, she returned to her old She-Hulk self again. These attempts to make Jen more like her cousin Bruce have their moments, but overall, whenever creators have Jen lose control, it makes her less unique. This Diet Hulk version of the 
the character is a whole lot less fun than the self-confident, wisecracking She-Hulk who gets into strange superhero legal shenanigans. Fitting the pattern of losing control of her powers and taking a break from superhero teams, Jen recently quit the Avengers to once again focus on her law career. She recently joined the firm of her old colleague Mallory Book and even settled things with her nemesis Titania. The two realized they both enjoy fighting each other and decided they would schedule future battles in remote areas where they could let loose and no one would get hurt. Who knows what far-fetched cases await this superhero lawyer. Whatever they are, this once and future Avenger has learned that there is nothing Jen Walters and She-Hulk cannot handle together. Alright, that's all for this video everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Morse Code and if you've enjoyed our content, go ahead and like and subscribe and keep it here at Plot Armor Comics for all your superhero needs.